Welcome back to our YouTube channel and in today's training, pretty excited about it, I will show you a little tool we built to automate creation of beautiful code snippet images. And we use carmen.now.sh, we use it for all our tips every day, um, but at some point you want to automate your process even more. So we look at uh, how the script works and the code behind it. Uh, we look at arc parts from the standard library. And for external modules, we look at environment variable management using python.env, selenium, uh, headless browser, and also piperclip to paste back code from your clipboard. So a lot to learn. Let's dive straight in. Today, we're going to talk about Carmen Selenium, a little library you made the other day to automate creation of beautiful code snippet images using Carbon. And Carbon is here, carbon.now.sh. And it allows you to make very nice snippets. We use in our tips on Twitter, LinkedIn, social media, and well, not in the book, but <laughs> that all definitely led to our tips book. So how this works is it's a command line script. It uses arc parse, and there are several ways to feed this to code. So you can use a snippet with the minus S. So here in quotes, we have print hello world, and it will automatically generate this image and download it to your computer. We can also give it a file. So here we have some fast API code in main.py and using the minus F option with the path to the file, the exact same code gets written into this carbon.png file using the carbonnow.sh service. And lastly, I'm most excited about and shout out to Piperclip from Al Swigart is it can also work with code that you have on the clipboard. Um, so I can copy any code and running the script with minus C it grabs it from the OS clipboard, again, thanks to Piperclip and makes the corresponding image. Let me actually live demo that. I can just copy these two lines of code, go into my project, run script minus C, and it takes a little bit because it runs Selenium in headless mode, which I'll show in a bit, and it created this image. So pretty useful, and I definitely want to see if I can wrap it in an API to make this even easier to use on a larger scale. So let's look at the code a little bit. So there are a few libraries I use, um, python.env for loading in the environment variables. And I set to because we need Chrome driver path, um, the Chrome driver to work with Selenium. And later I added the second sleep before download because, um, and that's the nice thing about building open source, uh, when people start using it, you start to find out about more edge cases and somebody had a slow connection. So he needed to wait a little bit longer before closing the Selenium browser so that the image could be downloaded. And instead of modifying the code, I thought it would be handy to abstract it out into an environment variable. So we load those in and we define the carbon URL and the nice thing about carbon is that you can specify the various variables in the URL as URL parameters. And actually, before I started to write any code, um, I looked at my current workflow. How I was using carbon was making a shortcut in Vim. So I can select a couple of lines of code and then uh, press comma B and it would reach out. Let me actually show this. For example, I could take this snippet and then hit comma B and it would open a new tab with the code in an image, and then I would manually export this image. And this is what this script actually automates. So before writing any code, it would be good to see your current tools you're using. And what I found here is this carbon now sh base URL, which actually puts the different options in the URL. So that was a very useful hint, and that then made the rest so much easier. So I define a URL here, and then I define a function create code image um, that starts to use the web driver, which is Selenium, which I import here. And I give it some options, and headless is an optional argument, which is defaulted to true. So by default, Selenium runs in headless mode, which means that it doesn't open the browser. 
And later on, I added an option that you can actually see the browser. And to demonstrate this, if I run the same command as before, but adding the minus B, it will open a browser. So it does not run in headless mode, so I can actually see what it is doing. We quickly saw that it's using the export button and makes the PNG, as I showed before. So it opens the web driver Chrome with the Chrome driver path as driver, as a context manager, which means it will automatically close the connection, which is the nice thing about context managers. I use quote plus, which is from the standard library from URL lib parse to encode the code snippet. And then I use format on that carbon URL to make the URL to use with the driver. Then driver get basically means that Selenium is reaching out to that URL. It finds the export menu uh, div by ID and clicks it. And then the export PNG div ID becomes available. And by clicking that, the actual image um, gets downloaded. And then I have that second sleep before download, uh, which defaults to three seconds, which works for me. But for a slow connection, you might want to set that to a higher value in your env. So you might, if you make this 10, um, it will wait for 10 seconds for the download to complete. And that's all there is to it. Not much code needed to uh, pull this off. And then the other part of this script is the command line interface. So I'm using arc parse, which comes with the standard library. And a cool thing I learned is uh, you can make arguments mutually exclusive by adding them to a mutually exclusive group. And by adding these three arguments to that group, I make them mutually exclusive, which means that if I use minus C with minus F, that won't work. And if I use minus F with minus S of snippet, that doesn't work either. Uh, well, actually, this is another problem. I this requires an argument, but then, so this would work, but then if I use it in combination with C, the error is pretty informative that the minus C is not allowed with minus F and minus F is also not allowed with minus S. And minus S requires an argument and now the error makes sense. I cannot use minus S if I also use minus F. So minus F for file, minus S for snippets and minus C for Clipboard are mutually exclusive and you can use add mutually exclusive group from the arc parse library to pull it off. So that was very useful. You can also specify the language, which will change this. So if we want to make a JavaScript snippet, specifying the language, which will result in minus L that will change this select box and then the syntax highlighting changes as per the language. And I have the minus B or browser, which basically lets you run this interactively or in headless mode, which again means that no browser window will be opened. Then I have a little bit of code to get the code depending on the different options. So from clipboard, we use Piper clip to get it from the clipboard. If we give it a file, we open the file and read the contents. And if it's code, it's literally the code in arcs.snippet. Then we parse the arguments, get the code, and then we create the code image with the code for the language and headless or no. And that's all there is. That's 72 lines of code doing something pretty useful. And thanks already for all the feedback because people found this uh, pretty useful. A few more things. I added typing. Again, the requirements. We use Piperclip, Python.env, and Selenium. I added a license so people can use it. And I think that's it. For more information, look at the README. It has all the examples. And importantly, you need the Chrome driver. So you need to go to this page and install the Chrome driver that matches the Chrome browser version you have installed on your system. And then you copy the .env template to .env. And in .env, you set the Chrome driver path to where you have installed that binary.
just to recap a, par a couple of improvements I made, and that's the nice thing about building these projects because you don't really foresee all the things you're going to need and want. So again, the minus B of the browser to, apart from the default headless mode, you can run it interactively. There was one bug that initially I didn't encode the code snippet. So half of the code image uh, was not shown. So quote plus to the rescue, and you should always encode your URL parameters. And just added now an hour ago, um, the second sleep before download can be configurable again for people with a slow connection. Splitting out your configuration from your code is a good practice as per the 12 factor app chapter three config, store the config in environment. I think that's it. Actually, I after creating this, I found an article we had we made two years ago about um, where we actually solved this problem already before. And interestingly, then I would make the Twitter image and that way I get it. So this solution is actually a little better. And here's another article where we also show you how to deploy Selenium headless mode onto Heroku, which is probably the next step I'm going to take in this project. So I can start to write an API around this tool. Um, so that's towards the end, number four, and uh, deploy to Heroku part one. So you need to use build packs. So I'm probably going to go back to this procedure very soon and get this up on Heroku and then build a little fast API endpoint around it so that you can call it with a payload and it will make the image on the fly for you. And then we can automate it. Then we can uh, make multiple images uh, in one go. All right, that's it for today. I hope this was useful. I hope it inspires you to use it and build your own code images and share them on social media. They really look beautiful. And let me know when you do. And also I hope that you learned a few new things um, from the standard library and from some exciting modules and that you're eager to use them by yourself. And that this shows you that there's no better teacher than uh, building those practical applications yourself. All right, see you in the next video. I hope you like that training and uh, I hope you will use the tool. And when you do, please um, mention us at bbelderboss or at pybytes. If you have any improvements, please open a PR and to, don't miss any video, any training we put out in the coming weeks. We're growing the channel. Subscribe below. And if you want to work with us, uh, take your Python and career to the next level. There's also a link to hop on a call with us, discuss your progress so far and see um, how we can best help you achieve your goals. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.